but you that I love. The song was given to me yesterday at the sixth hour, 12 noon, on my knees in prayer. So I was worshiping the Father and praying. It just, this spontaneous song just came out, a cappella. And then uh, the Holy Spirit said, I want you to record this. I was doing it for about five minutes and then I just recorded it and he gave me the melody to a song, he gave me part of it. And he says, I'll give you the rest later of which he had given to me this morning. So, here it is. It's called, It's You That I Love. Your grace is sufficient. It's more than enough. You must reign. The song that you just heard, It Is You That I Love, is what I would call a psalm. 
And why would you say that? Because when you look up what the definition of psalm, what it means, it's a sacred song. The songs that the Holy Spirit has given me throughout my journey have been in my prayer closet. So they would all be considered sacred psalms. Now you would think it's a far stretch that I would relate and consider myself a psalmist like our brother David, but there are many psalmists out there who receive these sacred songs from the Holy Spirit. They could be in your prayer closet, you could be in the car just worshiping him, and you'll get a spontaneous song, a sacred song given to you by the Holy Spirit. You can be doing dishes, doesn't matter. If you're receiving a song as a result of your praising or prayer, wherever you happen to be, and he gives you a song, it's a psalm. Let's call it what it is, beloved. He told me to title this video, Psalms in the Day, and Love Psalms in the Night. And I will also do a reading by Rhodes Davis. This was written in 2011 called, God Gives Me Love Songs in the Night. But before I, before I do that, um, I want to start with prayer. And uh, before I start with prayer, I want to just let, let you all know that um, as you have seen the short update video that I shared yesterday, if there are any comments, please post them, but I won't be checking on them and responding until after the fast is over at sunset uh, Pacific Standard Time. So it'll be, most likely it'll be after our sister, Miss Celeste, she's going to be doing the Book of Acts on Thursday evening at 6 o'clock Pacific Standard Time. So after that is over, I will be able to read the comments and reply. Um, so, hallelujah. Thank you, Father. I need to add to let you all know that be praying because this weekend's going to be quite after this three-day fast. I'm going into a three-day live stream marathon. <laughs> I'm like, Father, what were you thinking? <laughs> yeah, his timing is perfect. His ways are not our ways. So I would appreciate your prayers because this Friday night is going to be a live stream special presentation with our Miss Celeste, myself, and a secret guest. And we will be taking um, special guests to come in that has to do with the topic that our sister Celeste had shared about last Friday, this past Friday, um, when she was doing the Book of Acts. Saturday um, will be the live stream for the Father Heart of God reading and study. We will start that at 1. I don't know how all that's going to come about and how the format's going to be, but I'm just trusting the Holy Spirit. Mm, Sunday. We're going to have a mystery testimony. You will not know who this testimony is. It is a sister. And you will know when we go live. In fact, the Father has told me that any testimonies that I do, they are going to be mystery testimonies because we're not going to give the enemy, enemy any opportunity by letting others know on the Internet because we have a lot of um, wolves and uh, what do you call it, uh, tares and, and others who would like to take the opportunity to do their whatever. We, we don't want to give the enemy any opportunity here. So they're not going to know until we go live. That's just what the Holy Spirit has told me, especially with the batters, battles that are increasing. Father, I thank you for your son Yeshua. I thank you for all my precious, beloved 
family out there who are the very apple of your eye, the very center of your love and affection, of which you are, to those of us who put their trust in you, you are the center of our eye and our affection and our desire to want to become more and more like you, to want more of you, more of your love, more of your power, more of all that you desire to fill us. Because, Father, without your infilling, without you in us fully, it's like something's missing. But when you are filling us to overflowing, then we feel complete. It is you who completes us. It is you that is desiring to fill every part of who we are with your very essence, with your very life, with all that you desire to convey and give to those of us, to those of your people who will receive what you desire to give, to go beyond where they see themselves, to go beyond what they are presently hearing, to go beyond anything that they have been told. You said you want to pour into each and every one of us rivers of living water to overflowing. Father, forgive us for believing the lies that we've been told since we have been brought onto this earth, whether they be family members or friends or acquaintances, anything that we have been told that have been lies. Forgive us, Father, for listening to them. Help us to listen to the truth, the truth of the way you see us, the truth of who we truly are in you and your love for us, your deep love for us. Help us to come into a greater understanding of that, even with all the insanity and the craziness and all that is going on around us. Father, stretch us and bring us to where you are upward in you, to see things with your eyes, to hear with your ears, to hear what the Holy Spirit is wanting to say, but we have been distracted we have been dull from hearing. We've allowed the, the tell-eyes to our vision to enter in more than your truth that you speak forth through your word, through other brothers and sisters, and through your very voice. For you behold, you stand at the door and you knock. You said, if anyone open up the door, and let you in, you will sup with them and they with you. You want to dine with us and fellowship with us. Just like you put it in our heart that it is not good that man or the woman to be alone. You have not made us an island unto ourselves, but you made us to be a part of your, your body and your body is growing, getting bigger because you're so awesome. Thank you for what you're doing and the work that you want to accomplish through this, your conduit, your vessel. For I ask this in Yeshua's name. Your will be done. God gives me songs in the night by Rhodes Davis written in 2011. In the still of the night, loneliness and sorrow can envelop us, but Yahuwah gives believers songs in the night when they seek him in their sorrow. The perspective of Psalm 42 is someone in distress. Shall we read it? Let's go ahead and go to Psalm 42. Thank you for your word, Father. Psalm 42. Here we go. 
constancy. As the deer pants for the water brooks, so pants my soul for you, O Yah. My soul thirsts for Elohim, for you, the living Elohim. When shall I come and appear before you, Abba? My tears have been my food day and night, while they continually say to me, Where is your Elohim? When I remember these things, I pour out my soul within me, for I used to go with the multitude. I went with them to the house of Elohim with the voice of love and praise, with a multitude that kept a pilgrim feast. Why are you cast down on my soul, and why are you disquieted within me? Hope and Elohim, for I shall yet praise him. For the help of his countenance. Oh, my Elohim, my soul is cast down within me. Therefore, I will remember you from the land of the Jordan, from the heights of Hermon, and from the hill Mizar. Deep calls unto deep at the noise of your waterfalls. All your waves and billows have gone over me. For Yahuwah will command his loving kindness in the daytime, and in the night his song shall be with me, a prayer to the Elohim of my life. As is often the case in Psalms, the writer trusted in Yahweh's deliverance, though he had to endure suffering at the hand of his enemies. Though he was in sorrow, he wanted to enjoy pleasant times with the Lord again. He fondly remembered how he led the multitude in praise, and they made built pilgrimages to Yah's house. He eagerly desired Yah's company as a deer longs for the water. As a big meal, neither food nor drink are appealing. When one is feeling self-satisfied, self-sufficient, and at ease, he does not hunger and thirst for Yahweh Elohim. He does not need the Father. However, when one is suffering, broken down, and weary, he acutely feels the pain for Yah's presence and comfort. The psalmist did not thirst for Yah's word, but for Yah himself. Oh, hallelujah. Think on that one, beloved. It appears that his enemies had hindered his ability to come to the house of Yah and worship. Just as a young couple eagerly desires one another's company and seeks every opportunity to be with one another, so one who truly enjoys fellowship with Elohim will hunger for opportunities to join with him in prayer, in study, in worship. Though he was suffering, he could still see the kindness of Elohim in the daytime and sing songs as darkness enveloped him in the night. Think about this comforting scene. Yahuwah gives us songs during dark times. The phrase, songs in the night, quote unquote, appear a few times in scriptures and indicates confidence in Yah in the middle of dark times. Psalm 35, 9 through 10, Job's friend, Elihu, told of the confidence of the oppressed who cry to Elohim and receive songs in the the night. Psalm 77, 1 through 6. The psalmist reflected on a time when Yahweh all answered him, though he had to suffer some sleepless nights, yet even in his despair had songs in the night. Let's go ahead and read that. Psalm 77, 1 through 6. Shall we? Here we go. I cried out to Yah with my voice, to Elohim with my voice. He gave me ears. He gave ear to me in the day of my trouble. I sought Yahuwah. My hand was stretched out in the night without ceasing. My soul refused to be comforted. I remembered Yahuwah and was troubled. I complained and my spirit was overwhelmed. You hold my eyelids open. 
I am so troubled that I cannot speak. I have considered the days of old, the years of ancient times. I call to remembrance my song in the night. I meditate within my heart, and my spirit makes diligent search. Psalm 49, 5 encourages saints to sing loudly on their beds. When we are enduring trials or sorrows, we often lie on our beds staring at the ceiling and praying for help and answers. Though despair has driven sleep from us, Yahuwah is ever near. It is often in the silence and loneliness of the darkness that we realize how much we depend on Yah and that in suffering we see him more clearly. John Michael Talbot said, I can look back at my darkest periods and realize that these were the times when the Lord was holding me closest. But I couldn't see his face because my face was in his breast, crying. In the darkest of pain and despair, we can find a song of love, praise, and comfort from our Elohim. Acts 16, 20, 25 records how Paul and Silas were severely beaten and cast into the depths of a Philippian jail. It would be understandable if Paul and Silas moaned about their beating, complained to Elohim, and wallowed in self-pity, yet late into the night they were singing praises to Yah. They were following the example of Yeshua before spending the night in agonizing prayer and going to the cross, sang a hymn, with his disciples, with his apostles. So I'm going to read Acts 16 of this account with Paul and Silas. Let's go ahead and go there. Okay. Okay, 20. And they brought them to the magistrates and said, These men, being Jews, exceedingly trouble our city, and they teach customs which are not lawful for us, being Romans, to receive or observe. Then the multitude rose up together against them, and the magistrates tore off their clothes and commanded them to be beaten with rods. And when they had laid many stripes on them, they threw them into prison, commanding the jailer to keep them securely. Having received such a charge, he put them into the inner prison and fastened their feet in the stocks. But at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to Elohim, and the prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly, there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's chains were loosed. Hallelujah. How's that for breaking chains? Giving, giving a, a song in the night in the midst of their pain and their suffering. Matthew 30, or Matthew 26, 30, I'm going to read. It says, let's see. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Before the Civil War, as slaves labored in the field and endured beatings, separated families, poor living conditions, and all of the indignities associated with oppression, they sang spiritual songs of praise and deliverance. It is a challenge to sing songs in the night when you are enveloped with despair and feel that you are suffering. your suffering is unfair. How can we sing songs in the night? First, we must trust in Yahuwah's love and care. Abba, Father, our shepherd, can comfort us even when the suffering is the valley of the shadow of death. This is in Psalm 23. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, 
I will fear no evil, for you are with me. We can have confidence in his comforting presence, for he has said, I will never leave you, nor forsake you. We must seek strength from Elohim. Paul urged us to be strong in Yah's power. Ephesians 6.10. Let's read that. Okay. Finally, my brethren, be strong in Yahuwah and in the power of his might. That's what he tells us. We must not depend so much on our, our own strength. This is also when we need to allow others to help us bear our burdens. Abba Father is intimately concerned about us. Let's read the account in Luke 12. Six through seven. Are not five sparrows sold for two copper coins, and not one of them is forgotten by Elohim? But the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Do not fear, therefore, you are more of value than many sparrows. So if he knows when they fall, how much more he knows of you, beloved. If he knows the number of hairs that are on your head, how much more does he care for you? He cares for you too much to leave you in your present state. He wants you to rise up higher in him. And his purpose is in his ways. He wants to bring healing to your heart. He wants to give you songs in the night. And even in times of your suffering and despair, those are the times where you're going to receive the greatest, greatest songs. I know from my own personal experience, through the times of great rejection and people that have disowned me, friends that have left, those were the times when he has given me songs, songs in the night, songs in the day, that he used for my own healing. That's the beauty of these songs. That's why worshiping the Father is so special. It gets our eyes off ourselves. It, it, we glorify the very one who loves us so much that he wants to do everything possible in which we will allow him to change us so that we can become more like him, so we can enter into that fellowship as Yeshua said, Father, I ask that they may be one as we are one. We must also realize that there will be times of joy and sorrow. Times of sorrow help us appreciate the good times. The timeless wisdom of Solomon reminds us to enjoy the good days because the dark days will come. Let us read Ecclesiastes 7.14. Okay. In the day of prosperity, be joyful. But in the day of adversity, consider. Surely Yah has appointed the one as well as the other, so that man can find out nothing that will come after him. He further reminds us in Ecclesiastes 11, 3 through 8, the same things are out of our control and some things are within our control. We must do what we can do and leave the rest to the wisdom of Yahweh Elohim. I'll read Ecclesiastes 11, 3 through 8. If the clouds are full of rain, they empty themselves upon the earth and if a tree falls to the south or the north, in the place where the tree falls, there it shall be. He who observes the wind will sow, and he who regards the clouds will not reap. As you do not know what is the way of the wind, or how the bones grow in the womb of her who is with child, so you do not know the works of Elohim who makes everything. In the morning, sow your seed, 
and in the evening do not withhold your hand. For you do not know which will prosper, either this or that, or whether both alike will be good. Truly the light is sweet, and it is pleasant for the eyes to behold the sun. But if a man lives many years and rejoices in them all, yet let him remember the days of darkness, for they will be many. All that is coming is vanity. Yahuwah can only give his children songs in the night. Those who have rejected him or believers who are rebelling against him will only have anxiety and worry for they know that Elohim will punish them if they do not repent. To sing songs in the night, one must have peace, and true peace can only come through obedience to Elohim. And when you hear that word, punish them, if they do not repent, do not think of it like the way some of you have known punishment that was very severe. This kind of punishment is that when we receive the discipline, it's discipline. The Father disciplines those he loves. If you were not his, you would not receive the discipline. So he's going to allow things to come into your life as a form of discipline so you will turn from those things that are actually making you miserable. There's no better place to be than when you are walking in obedience to his will for your life. It is such a place of joy, such a place of peace, even in Yours love songs in the night It's you I treasure You are my sweet delight Yah beyond measure Giving wisdom and insight Your songs are in the night Yah's love songs in the night it's you I treasure, you are my sweet delight. Yah beyond measure, giving wisdom and insight. Your songs shine in the night. To you, Yah, I come, bow down before you, not my will but yours be done. I always knew, Yah, you have been there for me. Your truth has set me free. I'm not taking chances. All oh, this wonderful romance is drawing me to you. I hear your heartbeat, your commandments I will do. This lovely dance is calling out to me. Your love songs in the night Your love songs in the night Your yes, love songs in the night It's you I treasure You are my sweet delight Yah beyond measure Giving wisdom and insight your songs shine in the night. Your songs shine in the night. 